Paul Long Hill from China on the service judge. So this Group B match, Vitinghus or Denmark, the far side of the court as we look down against the French Open winner, the Darren. Tezubok, Canadian coach. Of course, big disappointment for Malaysian fans, the fact that world number one, Lee Chong Wei, withdrew injured after his first match. And so, therefore, in Group A, only three players in the group. Now, just to recap on exactly what the position is here in Group B, we know that Chen Long has won the group. He's top of the group because he's played three matches and won three matches. Targo has played his three matches as well, but he's only won one match. So it's quite simple. If Vitinghus wins today, he's won two matches and therefore qualifies. Exactly. And if he wins just a game, then he qualifies as well. So in order for strange things to happen here, Darren would have to win in two games. And then what happens is decided by the marking of the victory. And that's too complicated for us to, to calculate at the moment. Yeah. nervous you've obviously yeah. been speaking to him today or have you been speaking to coach uh, Larson no I haven't actually uh, spoken to any of them but um, you know knowing hands uh, I'm pretty sure he, he's a bit nervous um, yeah. he is considered to be the third men's singles in Denmark uh, after Peter Gale retired here I think is considered to be behind uh, Jano Jorgensen and Victor Axelsen and, and the thing is that he's not really that far behind so he would love to prove that he can actually uh, play with the really big boys here there's also a, a quite quite a, a difference in, in the price money uh, I don't think he has a, a risk of finishing uh, last in the group but uh, the difference between being number four and, and progressing to the semifinals is uh, seven thousand US dollars. So, yeah. uh, to Hans, that would be worth uh, bringing back home to Denmark and uh, increasing the size of the Christmas gifts a little bit. First game is it's just as good a chance as any uh, for Hans to take because uh, he's playing into the wind. Darren will have some trouble finding the correct length on his shots. So, uh, yeah, from a Danish point of view, just go on and take the first game here, and then he can relax a little bit more because then he's locked into the second position. his opening match weren't we against Chen Long on Wednesday evening he took the opening game there didn't he yeah, see played well, well and, and then sort of fell apart in the last two but uh, or it was perhaps Chen Long who raised his game mm. I really liked 
when he was playing against Chen Long and what we're seeing so far. I know it's very, very early stages, but when Viting Hus really starts commanding the rallies and dictating the pace, too often I see this young Dane reacting to what his opponents are throwing yeah. at him. But when he starts taking command and, and playing at his pace and really pushing his opponent, I think he's, he's a much, much better player. I totally agree, and, and even though he's two points behind here, I, I think he looks a bit more determined than uh, Darren Liu. Um, Don't be alarmed, he is two points in front. Oh, he's two points in front, well, that's good. <laughs> it's time I walk up. Now. <laughs> Yeah, Darren has, in my opinion, had a good season. Um, winning this Super Series was a great achievement for him, and um, especially when you when you know that he has to compete with Lee Chung Wei on uh, a daily basis. And uh, I, I guess he doesn't win a lot of matches there, so it's um, it's hard to get a lot of self confidence on, on the practice when you when you lose all the time. Nice shot from Liu. Good disguise. And that for length. Yeah, that's perfect, isn't it? One of the things Darren succeeded uh, doing in France against the Axels and was a really, really uh, strong attack that uh, sort of kept Victor playing from under, from below the table all the time. And, and I think Hans is a bit stronger physically. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how how this will work out in this match uh, if he can uh, sort of attack his way through beating who's back level for Darren that he doesn't make these uh, sort of silly mistakes because it was a it was a shot that he wasn't going to win anything on see Wittinghus was in perfectly well balanced here so a good balance so it's just a silly mistake so far up, isn't he? That's well, tremendous to see. The man who didn't qualify for the Olympic Games, or he was high enough on the world ranking, but of course not selected by Denmark. They actually took their two higher ranked players, Peter Vader and Ian Robinson. Yes, Van Arsen. 
was always a thoughtful player, wasn't he? Yes, Sorry? A thoughtful player. Very thoughtful, very, um, yeah, it was very easy coaching. Yeah. If you told him uh, that uh, this could be an idea, try this, then he just went on court and, and, and did it. And, uh, yeah, he's perhaps the best player I've experienced at mm. that. Very short um, coaching session because uh, Jesper Larsen just arrived on, on this court. Uh, been helping uh, Tina Baum playing on the adjacent court. So. Now he focus all his attention on uh, this match here. And of course, if we just bring you right up to date with what has happened on the adjoining court because it affects the first match that we witnessed this evening. And Rachinuk Intelon has beaten Tina Bound. 21-15, 21-14, so that confirms the Thailand youngster, only 17 years of age, as top of that group. And Steen, you've worked it all out. Who now is second of the group? It's actually uh, Sina Nebal, the straight game victory against uh, Juliana Schenk, earned her a spot in, uh, in tomorrow's semifinals. And a quite surprising development in, in that group. I think he's lost three rallies after the interval here, and, and I think he's lost them in a really bad way. I heard one of the uh, conversations uh, that that he was going to show Darren that it, this was going to be tough. And, um, well, I don't think he cares too much about working for it, Darren. I think he should rather show him that he plays well and is willing to take initiative, like you said before, Jill. Mm. That's what actually has gotten him this far in the tournament that's the will to try and create something instead of just playing along that's it yeah. because he can be so dangerous himself he's got a powerful smash and he's we've seen him use his uh, steep smashes his quick attack and if he uh, just plays the shuttle machine that's not gonna work mm, it's a brilliant net shot Yeah, your sport is all about taking your chances. You can't wait for it to happen. You've got to go out and make it happen. And, and now, already now, uh, Wittinghus has, has gotten far too many points, so it's almost impossible for Darren to, to qualify for the semi-finals. So motivation should be a factor now in this game. Good speed. Excellent, excellent play here. Just wide. Short. Oh my goodness, that was good. I was initially a little bit worried there because he hit it so close to the line, did Liu Darren. Didn't have to be that close, did it? 
that was that was that kind of attack that won him the French Open title. Yeah. I wonder if he actually touched the shuttle there. Did you think so? Anyway, the point's gone sure. to gone to Malaysia anyway. But that was a good response, as you pointed out. The uh, first three points after the mid-game interval all going to Liu Darren. And then, of course, five points to the Dame. It's an intriguing battle. That's why. Oof. Oh, what a great shot. Oh, it's just wide. Well, it was certainly the right shot to try and play. <laughs> oh, that was close, wasn't it? Well, of course, the line judge is in a better position than we are, but I think both you and I instinctively thought it was possibly good, but no overall from the umpire. And in fact, no argument from Liu Darren. No, uh, he, he was also in a bad position to see it because he yeah. was uh, on the other side of the court. But the umpire was sitting just above the shuttle and staring at it. So it just, sometimes it looks so close from up here. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I was going to say it was a great smash to set up the winner. It was a great smash. Oh, there's the nerves that you were talking about. In this game, she might have to regret that one. It is one of the points, that one of the areas that uh, beating who's needs to work on the following up on the smashes. Oh, that's just wide. And yeah. that, seemed, that seemed like a, an unforced error from Darren, but, but uh, he's been hitting two smashes that Bitting who's almost retrieved, so it's so natural that you want to be really sure that it's not coming back, and then these errors come. So it's sort of a mentally forced error. That backhand shot really reminded me of uh, Lee Chung Wei. That could easily have been a shot that he was doing. Yeah. effort 
to take it early on the backhand there, defeating Hoos. because he knows that he now has three game point opportunities and remember of course he only needs to win one game and he qualifies for the semi-final is a happy man and why not he's taken the opening game against Liu Darren of Malaysia and that game in this round robin competition is absolutely vital because by our calculation yes and by his by his reaction there that means that he'll be in the semi-final tomorrow and that's just game number one he wants the victory as well 21-17 in 20 minutes, that opening game. Well, you're nodding approvingly at that. Yeah, the first one I was a little distracted uh, thinking about who was, he was going to meet, but the last thing uh, I heard was that Wissing um, was saying to Jesper last night, I, I might as well try and win this game so I don't have to be too long time on the court. And um, yeah, I think we'll see him. Um, try to win this game and, and if he, su he succeeds uh, he'll of course of course be happy if he doesn't if he can see that he's uh, too fine behind this game i think he he's just gonna uh, try and and practice uh, a bit of uh, the new things he's working on and and conserve as much energy as possible for tomorrow's matches yes and of course tomorrow he will be playing against the winner of group a who of course was duping you of china I think he's got a real chance in that. He's played some very long matches to Ping Yu. Yeah. He was the only one who got to play Li Chung Wei in this tournament. So he's actually been playing three three game matches. Well, here's an interesting stat for you, Steen. Beating Hoos, definitely through to the semi-final of the Super Series Finals. Prior to this, in all the Super Series he's played th throughout the years, never progressed past a quarter-final. And the biggest of them, all the Super Series Finals, he's reached at least the semi-final. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be one happy uh, <laughs> day in going back to the hotel later tonight. Yeah, well taken. And that's good. And of course, it's it's also a difficult scenario here for um, Liu Darren as well, isn't it? Because, you know, he's lost his first two matches. He's lost the opening game here. Uh, the motivation now for him to try and win this match is not all that great because he knows he can't qualify for the semi-finals. This is his last match and... Uh and um, I don't th even think that he can um, better his position in the group. He's, he's number four in the group. So um, this is actually just practice. But, but still, um, 
could be important for for future um, head to head matches that um, if he could s establish some kind of uh, a winning streak against uh, Vizing Hoos. because uh, it's one of the situations where we could see some fireworks. Uh, both players can play freely now, so uh, there's a chance of some, uh, some good rallies. Just long of the back line. And his body language is very revealing, isn't it? That was quick. Complaints from Darren, so obviously Wittinghus didn't touch the net, even if it did close. Or, uh, no. I can't be a little too cute there. Yeah. I think for future uh, selection situations, it's important for Wittinghus to win this match because otherwise, as a Danish coach or a sports director, you could say, I mean, if you can't beat Darren at this point of the tournament, when can you beat him? Yeah, when. Obviously, the Malaysian has lost his first two matches. He, he knows he can't qualify, so psychologically, he's going to be on a downer. Yeah. There's, there's no doubting his capabilities as a badminton player, but put him in this scenario, and you'd like to see his opponent say, OK, I'm taking advantage of the fact that he's not Tim. on an emotional high. Yeah. It's easier from up here, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> to tell. We're always in good position and uh, we're never short of breath. <laughs> oh, 
Still four straight points, just when I thought that uh, the Malaysian was beginning to struggle. Yeah, and some easy points, actually. Um. Yeah. So in a situation like this, it's so important for, for the player that has the momentum to, to maintain the, 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 the pace and hopefully uh, increase it a little bit. I remember former Olympic champion Paul Eric Hoyer, when, when he had these situations, he was so quick. You never got to think as an opponent. He was just grabbing the shuttle, serving, scoring points. Five straight points now to the Malaysian. And now it's actually uh, Witting who looks a little bit like he's not, he's not there. Yeah. wide and therefore it's Liu Darren who has the advantage here in the second game the mid-game interval this is really one of the tough situations uh, as a coach uh, the Malaysian coach here trying to um, cheer up Darren Liu and uh, sort of put some importance into this match I mean so important to to give the players an idea, what are we going to use this match for? How can how can we um, how can we uh, make use of it for future tournaments? Is there still a, a possibility that the Darren can end third in the group rather than fourth in the group? Just because, of course, we shouldn't forget that there's not any prize money at stake between difference of third and fourth placing within each of the groups. There's no ranking points as well. So, I mean, it's, it is a difficult scenario for the players because every player will have arrived here in Shenzhen hoping to win the tournament, wanting to win the tournament. When you know that chance has gone, it's the motivation becomes totally different, doesn't it? No, the, the group is actually uh, locked. Um, Chen Long is winning the group. Uh, no matter what happens, the rest two games here, um, Bittinghus is second, and uh, Kenichi Tago of Japan is finishing third and Darren Liu is finishing fourth if Darren should go on to win the next two games he will have a game score of 3-5 whereas um, Kenny Chitago will have 3-4 and one game better Wittinghus will have then a game score of 4-4 and that means one game better than Targo and two games better than Darren Liu Yes, because it's all a very complicated thing with these round-robin competitions. Because it's not just winning matches, it's whether you've won or lost in two or three games. And then the game's difference, as you've just been saying, counts. And then if the game's difference is exactly the same, then you come down to the number of points as well. As long as there are three on the same number of wins and losses and same number of games differences, if it goes down to two players being equal, then of course it becomes whoever won the match between those two players. So it's all very complicated, and I'm very lucky that I've got Steen sitting next to me keeping me right on it all. The accountant. <laughs> but I think there's one player quite happy for this match, and that is uh, Du Peng Yu, because yeah. um, if I were him, I would expect um perhaps not expect but, but uh, would like beating who's not to win this match because all in all it's just uh, 
is just not coming into the match against Duping Yu with the same kind of self-confidence as if he wins this match. Yeah. And it is winnable. And of course, if Viting Hu doesn't win this match, it means that he must have had to play three games. Yeah. So again, he's going to ha have more time on court. He's going to be a little more, more jaded for tomorrow's semi-final. The rallies when he was leading 9-5, wasn't it 9-5 he was ahead? Yes. They were just terrible, and, and the game right now is actually terrible. Not the game, but Wittinghus' game is, is terrible right now. slow he's using a lot of energy even though he doesn't think he is but um, it's just much worse than than uh, increasing the speed and, and and playing the way you want to play but I, I reckon it's hard mentally because it has his uh, taking so much energy and qualifying for the semifinals but still would have been much better just to if he was able to then just to move on playing more efficient oh, well taken no well, credit to you know, Darren because he did look down and out I thought so certainly at five yeah. nine down yeah and he's showing good character and yeah, indeed play a third and deciding game also, I mean there's also the risk that um, an injury could occur in the third game mm. that would prevent you from from playing on in this tournament so I really yeah. don't like this uh, losing 16 for the last 20 rallies says well it's hard to play any uh, worse and yes but just says no <laughs> still hear them in my headset and, and now they're discussing uh, just going through it all again making sure that one game is enough to qualify so here we go third and deciding game who's having taken the first 21 17 but me Darren fighting back well in the second 21 13 and then normally of course in the third and deciding game we always emphasize everything to play for but it's a very different scenario here just why Darren doesn't like that call at all I have to no. say I was a little bit surprised too yeah I, I thought it was in given what happened at the Olympic Games players do have to be very very careful that 
they are seen to be making best effort to win. So, you know, you've got this scenario. He knows he's in the semi-final tomorrow. Well, I don't think there's any risk of that. No, because he's such a fighter anyway. His character wouldn't... That's one thing, and, and there's also other matches in this tournament uh, where um, things are decided. So uh, I don't think uh, Wittinghus is in any risk of being uh, of being punished for not giving his best. Uh, and I'm not suggesting for one moment he's not giving his best no, effort. No. Let's make that absolutely clear. But given the fact that we've just been discussing you know he's got to play this third game now yeah. he's got a semi-final tomorrow if it if it was that he could by by deliberately losing getting for him a better opponent then that would be uh, a questionable situation yes. yeah but everything is locked here he's number two in in the group and um yeah yeah there's nothing to gain nothing to lose for him and it's actually just what We've discussing, we've been discussing off uh, air that um, when the runners uh, in the uh, 100 meters have qualified for the semifinals or the finals in in the uh, big events, they sort of um, just just stop just a little bit 10 meters ahead of the goal line. Yeah. One of the things that uh, Jesper could uh, emphasize um, for Bittinghus is that he has to sort of use some of the strokes that he's going to use tomorrow against Du Pingyu, and, and that's not these very, very high clears. He's not going to use them at any point tomorrow. So don't use them today because you, you just get into a bad habit yeah it's also um, the match is also a lesson to people that uh, that uh, are unsure if badminton is a mental game mm. It is the mental difference between the first game in this match and the last two games is so obvious. Yeah. But don't you think at the elite level of sports, most sport, uh, you know, all the athletes, every single badminton player here at these Super Series finals has a certain technical quality. They've all got very good shots and therefore the higher up the tree you go in the elite level, more and more the mental side of the sport comes to the fore and more and more important it is as, as to who deals with the pressure, who's got the motivation, who can think in, in the pressure situations. Yeah, both yes and no, because uh, I think it's, it's decisive uh, when you are almost equal on all other points, but... Um, I don't agree that all the players has equally uh, technical skills. It's just that to many they have apparently equally skills, but it's, they're not equal. Because it's about making these small deceptions, um, having the right touch in pressure situations. If you have the same touch without pressure, well then often, uh, sometimes you can see that under pressure, the touch is gone for one player while another one has it. Um, but of course they all have a very very high technical level mm. and also the tactical level the terms of when to use what kind of shots and, and it's typical to see that, that there's some difference we've seen hands making a couple of um, uh, net shots here where, where Darren is just standing at the net and it's obvious that Darren will be standing at the net in a situation like this because well he might as well take the chance he's got nothing to lose
and Darren with the advantage, three point advantage here in the third game. Players change ends, a little shake of the head from beating this. Judgment just wide. The more this match progresses, the more I don't like it. Um, Reminds me a lot of the match in uh, Sudirman Cup where Denmark were leading 3 1 against Malaysia. Lee Chung Wei suffered his ankle injury, and uh, Bitting Hoos was playing the last singles match against uh, Mohamed Hafiz Hashim. And uh, yeah, the Malaysian player didn't have anything to play for either. So um, it was a good match for Hans, it was uh, a winnable match. But he ended up losing it in, in three games and, and wasn't selected for the rest of the Thomas Cup tournament. Uh, so, in other words, you're sort of saying that, you know, this should have been an opportunity for Vitam yeah, to, yeah. to prove himself yeah. to himself and to the Danish selectors exactly. and to other players in World Badminton. And, and to all the viewers in Danish television who's uh, showing this match live, of course, they appreciate that he qualified for the semifinals. That shouldn't prevent him from winning the match yeah. either way. Um, and Jesper Larsen, the coach, and, and Bitting, who's discussed that, um, well, my head is not there. Well, then get your head to be there, because yeah. this is not the hardest match you're going to have in your career. You're going to have a lot of other matches mm. where your head needs to be there. And if it's not there here, you need to practice. Yeah. Just wide. I think in all fairness, I, I think the whole turnaround in the match has been a combination of two things that Vitting who's his head isn't there at the moment. That's quite obvious. But I think we also have to give credit to Liu Darren in that, you know, at a game and five nine down, it would have been awfully easy to say, what's the point? You know, I'd worked out beforehand. Uh, I needed to win this match in two straight games and here I've lost the opening game, but he's he's stuck to his guns and he said, yeah. "No, I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna carry on. And I'm gonna win this good yeah. character." And he can go back to Malaysia with a good feeling. Yes. I won the last match. The first two matches weren't that great. I yeah. played three games with uh, Chen Long, but I lost. Uh, I won the last match. Yeah. Even though it was a match of uh, really not that big importance, I managed to pull myself up and win it. Yeah. And that's good. And now I'm ready to take a break here during Christmas and then. I'm ready for the new Super Series yeah. season. Yeah. It's gliding around the court now is the yeah. is uh, Neil Darren.
Not a good defence, yeah. Well played. Nice way to bring up match points. Judge seems to be <laughs> getting a little bit confused. They were wanting her to sit down as quickly as possible so they could resume play, and she thought they were wanting her back on court. Anyway, here we are. Match points. across court with a full pirouette. Not all credit to Liu Darren. Twenty-one fourteen in the deciding game. Fifty-two minutes in duration. Look at this final backhand smash. I think hitting Lucy's shot probably would have gone wide, but this is terrific. of the score 17 21 21 13 21 14 Reaching loose will be in the semi-final tomorrow despite that 